hi guys welcome to the channel of love okay let's have a look at this energy today this energy today i don't know why i said it like that when i lean back you kind of get like these little sparkle effects i think they're coming from the lamp behind me but uh <clears throat> fairies sparkles magic okay i've got the tarot grand lux and the oracle <clears throat> The Oracle of Shadows and Light. In the background, if you can hear music, that's Encanto. That's my daughter watching Encanto. Okay, I've seen the first part of it, so I thought I'd come and do a reading. And then I'm going to join her for the second part, which I haven't seen. Okay, <laughs> just in case you're wondering what the music was. Okay. <clears throat> the Knight of Cups. I was actually going to call him the King. I'm the King of the Castle and you're the Dirty Rascal. This is the Knight of Cups. Okay, so he's not the King. But I wanted to call him the king. But he's not the king. He's a dirty rascal. Okay. <laughs> I feel there's a bit of an ego thing um, with the divine masculine here. Like this isn't the king of the castle. Whoever this person is, uh, it's a shark. That's the energy it come through. I thought this is the, the king of cups. Mr. Lover Man. Shabba. And uh, it's Shabba. <laughs> I felt more like shove, shove her shove her <clears throat> there's an energy here of actually claiming the divine feminine so that nobody else uh, claims their throne <laughs> the divine masculine has a throne now he's the king of cups okay but there's a knight of cups on the <clears throat> on the table this masculine needs to step up then not the knight the king maybe he needs to step up for a knight for a knight for a knighthood Okay, we've got the Empress here, and she's cuddling her baby. She's keeping him close. It's a real nice energy here, because it's a nakedness. But it's um, it's a very caring, soothing... Well, it's the Empress card. Um, vulnerable energy. There's a protective energy here. That's quite cute, because I feel like... That's all I can say about that card, is cute. Because that's a Divine Feminine's baby. I want to say the Divine Masculine, okay? Like, she's protective as well, which the Empress is. She's very protective over those that she loves. But this is like a turn in the energy. When I said about shove her out of the way, this might be the Masculine here feeling that maybe he shouldn't have... <clears throat> disregarded... Uh, the Divine Feminine, the Empress here. It feels the energy he wants it now. We'll find out some more from the Oracle. And we have, oh, the Magician. The Masculine here, the Divine Masculine. He is Divine. He knows his place and his position. And he and he is the Magician. There you go. Um, I feel about him putting you as being number one. It's like your top priority, Divine Feminine. <clears throat> card feels heavy there's an owl here which is interesting um so if you've been receiving signs regarding the owl which i have received a sign through um another divine feminine she sent me a recording of an owl last night um okay signs symbols so very much the energy here, I want to say the masculine sending out signs, sending out vibes. But he's got symbols here. I felt the energy of like doing symbols by someone's ear. Like to clear their hearing. <clears throat> okay. Um, but let's carry on a bit more. There's this energy of him trying to reach you because there's so many different planets here. 
The books behind took me to wisdom. The song that's coming through here, although I feel it's the divine masculine <laughs> calling the feminine, is come to me. Let me put my arms around you. This was meant to be. And I'm all so glad I found you. Need you every day. Gotta have your love around me, baby. Always stay. Cause I can't go back to living without you. I don't know if they're the words, but <laughs> that was a pretty good go. That came out well. Well done. Okay. I'm going to take these last two cards here because they kind of slid off the top. Three cards? Four? All right. <clears throat> Ten of cards. Very nice. Because I can't go back to living without you. Six cups up on the shelf there, remembering what love is. Memories of the past. This is memories of past, present and future. Okay. Oh, interesting. Past, present and future. I've got the ace of cups here though. The Ace of Cups is here. It's like he's protecting that cup. I'm feeling the energy now of this actually being like the Divine Masculine's energy because I felt it was the King of Cups and there's all the sharks around this cup here. I feel he wants to like fight off the sharks. <laughs> the energy of like he pushed her away, he shoved her away. <clears throat> To keep her from danger. Okay. Queen of Coins. Queen of Pentacles. That's the Divine Feminine's energy again. Again, the most motherly, nurturing, loving energy. Okay, I've got two cards left, but I'm drawn to read the meanings of these cards. So let's do them in the order that they came out. <clears throat> Where's my little book gone? Where's my little book gone? I feel like someone's keeping records or going back over for phone numbers. You know, like revisiting. I don't know. They say you have a little black book. Men have a little black book. <laughs> it's, there's some uh, recollection of the past, present and future. Okay, let's um, we'll read the cards. Let's go to the Knight of Cups first. The romantic knight gazes out through piercing blue eyes. He is dreamy, sensitive and refined, yet can also be rash at times. The pair of inward-facing seahorses on his helmet indicates that he is more likely to act from his inner emotions rather than from practical external factors. <clears throat> Interesting where it said here, he can be rash at times. The Empress. Let's read about the Divine Feminine's energy here. This card depicts Gaia, Mother Earth. A tree trunk morphs into a <clears throat> morphs into a human form. Its canopy provides a home for birds and a variety of creatures. Okay. Should we let's start again and read about the Empress? This card depicts Gaia, Mother Earth. A tree trunk morphs into a human form. Its canopy provides a home for birds, and a variety of creatures inhabit the sanctuary, the sanctity of its shade. Between all the living beings, between all the living beings here is a shared concept of abundance and maternal nurturing. Okay. Between all the living beings here is a shared concept of abundance and maternal nurturing. And I feel that this is the maternal nurturing that's come over the divine masculine. Okay. Then we had the magician. Now, when I done the reading the other day, it was the Empress, all major arcanas, the Empress, 
then it was the magician and then it was the hangman but it was a woman a hanged woman it was sacrifice <clears throat> anyway where are we going to now the magician so today we've got the empress the knight of cups and the magician this card illustrates wisdom in various forms the books in the background symbolize academic learning while the various glass vials instruments and mechanical artifacts in the foreground reference the alchemical and scientific realm the owl and the ankh conjure the intuitive natural and spiritual elements i feel as if this masculine's like learnt the lesson that he was going through it's a cycle um he has understanding why he has been through um certain things okay what was the reason for them personal growth the queen of coins Baby, come to me. Okay. In spite of her powerful position, the beautiful queen is compassionate, generous and down to earth. She takes great pleasure in helping others and creating a nurturing environment for all living things. Nice energy to buy, apparently. And then we have Ten of Cups. That would be the environment. She takes great pleasure in helping others and creating a nurturing environment for all living things. Ten of Cups. I fancy drinking some Coca-Cola. I just had the urge to have some Coca-Cola. I've got coffee though. <laughs> um, the Ten of Cups. A couple relaxes in the warm glow of the fireplace along with their snoozing cat. This card emanates contentment, security, family bonds, peace and harmony. This scene is not just the house where they live. This is home, where all are welcome. Belly rumbling. So now we've got two cards that are left. <clears throat> we've got the King of Swords. Energy of him being in control of the book. The King of Swords. Let's read about his energy. I've got the chills all of a sudden. Who's in charge of the books? So I'm feeling the block of money, abundance. Um, because there's a fear of lack. Sounds like we're, the carnival's coming. You can hear them. <clears throat> the parade's coming <laughs> in the far distance. You know, they're getting closer. Sounds like carnival music. <clears throat> um, we're going to the King of Swords. Something about who does the books. Who's in charge of the books. That would be who's in charge of really your life, your lessons, your life lessons, your education. You just need to ask yourself, which this question's been going through my mind again, as a good question to ask is, who do you spend uh, the most time with? Who are the five people that you spend the most time with in your life? And that can basically sum up your life. Okay, so let's go to the King of Swords. It's like who's in control of the books? Writing your chapter, writing your story. Are you, this magician's in control of it because he's learnt the lesson. You're in control of your own destiny. Okay. King of Swords. The King of Swords masters any problem with his gifts of knowledge and insightful analysis. He has trained his falcon with the same kind of discipline he applies to everything. Who's in control? Who's following who? Who's following suit? Do you do it... Whose way are you doing it? <laughs> Your way? Hmm. Interesting, because I was going to say your way or the highway. Well, the higher way is uh, very enlightening, but not many people take that way. So when you're adamant that you're 
Maybe just the cards that you're dealt is the cards that you're dealt. Well, these cards are good. You've been dealt a good hand. Okay. And it's like, do you have destinies in your hands here? Do you have control of your own life? All right, let's um, have a look at this. It was here where it said he has trained his falcon with the same kind of discipline he applies to everything. Okay. So who are you behaving like? Are you behaving like yourself? How you want to live your life? Are you behaving as somebody else would like you to live your life? Have you handed over control, power? Oh, I want to take a big sigh. <laughs> Maybe a sigh of relief because you're looking up. Now, the four of cups here, you're normally moaning. Moaning? That's a big one as well. Another thing that uh, has come to mind today was really is... I was actually going to write a post up on and put it on the community tab. And I was going to put, do not complain. Picking yourself up on this one thing will be the biggest beneficial thing you can do for your life. Is to stop complaining about anything. Don't complain about anything, okay? Give it a go. You'll soon notice how much you do complain. Even in your mind, guys, it's not about complaining out loud. Watch those thoughts. Watch those thoughts and watch your life change. Stop complaining. What is there to complain about? Well, stop best thing you can do for yourself okay and this masculine here he's kind of i don't know there's the energy of not so much praying but praying for this this is what we all want and desire and this is what our soul wants us to experience okay so the four of cups Shown here are three tangible cups in the foreground with one ethereal vision of a fourth. There are various possible takes on this image. These are mine. You are satisfied with what you have but are imagining potential future needs and possibilities. Alternatively, you are so busy daydreaming for more than you are Okay. Alternatively, you are so busy daydreaming for more that you are unaware or unappreciative of what you already have. One of the biggest lessons to learn on the spiritual journey. Contentment. Okay. I think we can end now <coughs> with an oracle of shadows and light. That was interesting reading. Okay, 20 minutes long. I'm going to go and join the carnival now. <laughs> Violet Angel, Breaking Dawn, card number 23. Let's sing party, 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 party. Are you joining the party? Or are you still with the pity party? This beautiful angel appears when something new is on the horizon. She is the colour of dawn. And I feel this energy of what something just dawns over you. Like, not what you've been doing wrong. I, I used to complain so much. Well, maybe not as much as what others do, but I still... Um, would complain especially maybe inside my mind and when you just learn the lesson you have to keep picking yourself up first about it and um and then soon you'll just start changing the way that you think about things okay so this beautiful angel appears when something new is on the horizon she is the color of dawn and she waits for you to become aware of these wonderful possibilities when she appears, it is a sign that many wonderful coincidences, events, friendships and changes you've been longing for are about to arrive at last. She wishes to arouse you. <laughs> it's just a word, okay? I know, but it's a good word, isn't it? Arouse. She wishes to arouse you so you will be ready to take full advantage of all the new blessings that are coming soon. Wake up and ready yourself. 
The Violet Angel Speaks. <clears throat> There have been times recently when you felt you've lost your spark and that your physical body has been exhausted almost as if you were born tired. It has been a long night of the soul, but now I'm here to let you know that not only has the worst passed, the best is on the horizon. It is faint, like the carnival sounds, seriously. It is faint and it is gathering energy, but it is on its way. Soon, with this new dawn, your energy will begin to flow again and you'll feel reconnected to your own internal power source once more. Your spirit will blossom and your intuition will hum. Mm. I wanted to sing Kumbaya. <laughs> Kumbaya, my lord. Kumbaya. Please awaken earlier and be ready to begin our work on this new project by spending time outside in nature in the, in the early morning. Okay, the divination message. With fresh hope after a difficult time, something new breaks through and shows evidence of its approach and with it, your new reality. You have good reason to feel optimistic, cheerful, and like something has changed on a permanent basis. You are on the verge of a new day. And it is in these delicate and faint beginnings that something strong and bright will come. Do not wish to hurry it up. Do not wish it to hurry up. To the brightest part of the day, enjoy this tender new birth of a time which you have longed, hoped for. Gratitude and awakenings. Gratitude and awakenings. Early rising and trying new things are all on the agenda when this beautiful violet angel of spiritual new awakenings flies into your life. And soon I'll be doing a fly on the wall reading. I think that will be at the weekend, maybe, possibly. <laughs> uh, yes, um, I will try to get that out at the weekend, uh, a fly on the wall reading. I've uh, had a couple of signs now to say we're due a fly on the wall reading. Anyway, let's leave this reading right here, right now, right here, right now. Okay, leave you with a, with a bit of fat boy slim and I'll catch up with you soon. Okay, take care. Much love. Bye for now.